Hi, Misha here, and we have talked about the Italian Carcano many times. However, in 2020, there have been quite a few imports coming in from Ethiopia and elsewhere, imported by IO, Royal Tiger, and others. And it's been brought to my attention that some of these are mislabeled. So I thought in this video, we would try to have a pretty straightforward and as brief as I can do it, guide to Carcano carbines, specifically targeted buying. So this isn't really going to be much of a mechanical features or much about history outside of how they apply to the variations. It's just going to be about trying to help you know what you're looking at so in this first section we're going to look at the three main types of carbine found for carcano and then each one of these will get its own subsection where we look at some major variations on the bottom we have the cavalry carbine This is an M1891. In the middle, we have the Troops Special, TS as it's called, carbine. This is also an M1891, which does, does lead to some confusion, but the truth is they are very different, as you can tell, at least in what they really are. And then finally at the very top, we actually have the M38 short rifle. Not a true carbine, but it's often called a carbine, so we'll, uh, we'll roll with that for the purposes of this video. Both the cavalry carbine and the TS carbine have a 17.7 inch barrel. And both of these fire the 6.5 by 52 Carcano cartridge. The cavalry was adopted in 1893, so just a couple of years after the rifle. And not surprisingly, for cavalry use. The TS was adopted sometime later, actually in 1897. And this was for more infantry use, artillery, bicycle troops, what have you. The cavalry carbine has side sling mounts, this kind of neat roller style, and it has a trap door in the butt for a sectional cleaning rod. And it has this folding bayonet assembly with a cutback stock and short upper handguard. The troops special, and we will look at the variations, don't worry, can have several different sling swivel arrangements. No trap in the buttstock, rather it has a cleaning rod under the barrel and a nearly full stock and a longer top handguard. And it has a removable bayonet, a few different styles were used. And essentially, this was a short rifle. And by that I mean it has a lot of the same features as the main Carcano rifle. Just a barrel that's about a foot shorter. Whereas the cavalry carbine, as you can tell, is pretty specialized. And one of the most unique looking Carcanos. The actions on these are the same. They both, of course, feed from a six round on block or man liquor style clip 
they have turned down bolts with standard safeties, so on and so forth. So both of these were produced before and during World War I. But our last one up here, the M38, as you might guess, went into production in 1938. Now, while some in this family do fire the 6.5 cartridge, it was originally developed to fire a new 7.3 millimeter cartridge and also be a compromise between a carbine and a long rifle. Although it definitely tends more towards the carbine. It has a 20.9 inch barrel, so basically 21 inches. It has a very unique bayonet system, which we'll look at in a bit. It has side sling mounts. And to simplify it for production and use, it has just a fixed rear sight. Same Carcano bolt system, same Carcano magazine. The cavalry carbine and TS carbine are about 36 inches long with the 38 just over 40 inches long so all are quite a bit shorter than the full length long rifle so I hope this kind of gives you the basic differences cavalry carbine you can easily identify because of the spike bayonet the TS will be short but have a full stock and the M38 will be even longer with even more full stock. It will have a different type of bayonet lug and so on and so forth. Also the 38, like the cavalry carbine, has a storage compartment in the butt stock for a sectional cleaning rod. So those are the basics. But within each model or style, there are definitely differences so let's look at a few of them again I don't want to go too much into detail and make this an hour long but I really would like to help if possible anyone who's looking at the surplus guns currently available the cavalry carbine was made up through World War One, and production was halted in the 1920s but then resumed in 1932 and is the original M91 model would last until about 1938. During the 1930s they would go away at least at some factories from the hex receiver to the round but they would retain the adjustable sight. So that's an easy way to tell a 91 style. In 1938 when they went to the M38 Most Carcanos would end up getting the simplified rear sight, fixed notch. And with this, this would become known as the M9138 Cavalry Carbine. So, fixed rear sight, 9138. Adjustable rear sight, M91. Just to kind of boil things down. Another change would be with the bayonet system. And there are several, six or seven different assemblies here. This one is the lever style. Push it down to release. And lock it back in. Not the most secure, so they went to a spring-loaded style. But even there, there are different variations. That's why I actually have two of them out. When I flip these back over, we'll talk about that. So there are variations in the uh, bayonet assembly to be aware of. So those are the major changes. The M9138 Cavalry Carbine was produced roughly from around 1940 through 1943 and so it was in frontline service for quite some time 
and was produced in quite large numbers. So if you counted all those one firearm, these are in pretty long production runs with a couple of breaks here and there. And here is the other side of the catch, just so you can see. These both use a spring-loaded button to release and lock the bayonet in. It's a more secure system. But this one has a solid button head on this side, whereas this one is concave. I would imagine this was a little easier to press and a little less likely to get depressed on its own. But yeah, there are lots of major and minor variations of the bayonet housing for the cavalry carbine. And that's not to say one is more valuable than the other. It's just something to be looking out for. And all of these should have a turned down bolt handle. It's worth pointing out that early, and I do mean early production, cavalry carbines did not have an upper handguard, but this was very quickly added to the design, so the chances of finding that are very, very slim. And Carcano rifles are pretty good about being dated, especially during the Mussolini era. And once they went to the M38 in the 7.3 cartridge, they also became very good about marking the rear sight with the caliber. So, if it's a World War II Carcano, you can easily find the caliber on the fixed rear sight. So, that's the cavalry carbine. Let's move on to its little brother. Honestly, the most interesting, but also most convoluted and confusing, the Special Troops. Troops Special TS Carbine Series. On the bottom, we have the original M91 TS. Then we have the M9124 TS. Then we have the M9128 TS. And then finally at the very top, the fourth one, we have the M9138 TS. So what are the differences? Well, the original M91 was meant to be a short rifle for its soldiers. Troops that normally would need a full rifle with detaching bayonet, but needed something shorter and lighter than their infantry rifle, yet the cavalry carbine wasn't well suited to them. So it had a full forearm to protect against barrel heat. And originally it had bottom mounted sling swivels, but later they would go to different arrangements with side mounts. Originally it could even have a straight bolt handle but very quickly they would go to the uh, turned down carbine style. No uh, trap in the butt for a cleaning rod. Instead, it had a small rod under the barrel. And the way to identify a 91TS original is this unique bayonet lug called a transverse lug. Rather than locking on from the front or back in some cases, as a normal lug, it locked on from the side. They thought ergonomically this was better. To work with this, there is a lug in front of the sight and below it on the barrel. You can also tell it because it has a carbine rear sight. It is adjustable with a fixed battle sight. But instead of being 2,000 meters like the rifle, it is 1,500 because carbine. Original pre-World War I and World War I production guns will have this hex shape to the barrel shrink and the bore will feature gain twist rifling by that I mean it starts off relatively slow at the chamber and then speeding up the twist rate as it works its way towards the muzzle and why do I mention that well production of the 91 TS would get run through World War I and then they would do one final run using up parts in 1919 then in the 1920s, Mussolini wanted a more mechanized military. Thus came about the 9124. 
what Italy did not have in the 1920s was a great deal of money. So they took long infantry rifles that had worn out bores. The gang twist rifling had the side effect of wearing out the muzzle faster than the rest of the rifling. So they cut the barrels down from 30 some odd inches to 17.7 inches. Gave it a short cleaning rod and they retained the standard rifle bayonet lug. They would cut down the forestock, give it dual sling swivels, side and bottom. This one just has it on the bottom and the rear. Still no spot in the back. And the rear sight will be interesting. Notice how it's this big rear sight. Because it started off as a rifle rear sight. Now they move the notch down on it. Giving it a very unique profile. The sight leaf is long, but the sight itself is in the middle. So that's an easy way to tell a 9124 plus the um, production dates. These will be older rifles, meaning even if they were converted in the 20s, the dates on the rifle are much older, sometimes even antique. And they would convert over a quarter million between 1924 and 1929. So why does gain twist rifling matter here? Well, because they cut off the part of the barrel that had the tighter twist, leaving the back half here with the slower twist rate. So it would be kind of like modern day if you shot a 62 or 69 grain bullet out of a 1 in 12 or even 1 in 14 twist rate AR-15. Stabilization was not optimal. These guns are not known for great accuracy. In fact, they're quite infamous for very poor accuracy. I'm not saying don't get a 9124. I'm saying don't get one expecting it to be a matched target rifle. It uh, was something done ad hoc to give the infantry more carbines and to use up partially worn out long rifles from World War I. But they only had so many. Which leads us to our next couple of guns. The M9128 TS. This is very similar to the original 91 TS. And is easily distinguished from the 24 by the rear sight. It has a proper short carbine rear sight. It can have various sling swivel arrangements, but typically has side and bottom both. With the major difference from the earlier TS being a standard bayonet lug to work with a standard bayonet. Also, it's worth pointing out the bottom is open for the cleaning rod channel. This one is uh, closed up because of the uh, bayonet system. There were two different basic types of 28. You had brand new production guns built between 1928 and roughly 1938 when they ran out of old guns to cut down. And sometimes they would take older M91 TSs, especially late production ones from 18, excuse me, 1918 and 1919 and restock them and refurbish them. So 9128, you can either find brand new production or you can find with older dates like 1900, but restocked to this style. And while it was not official, this was the de facto standard issue infantry gun in the Italian army during the 1930s, the Ethiopian campaigns and so on and so forth. 
And while production would end before World War II, they would continue to refurbish and issue these throughout the 1940s, even into the early 1950s. So I hope that helps a bit in distinguishing 91 from 9124 and 9128. Quick IDing would be the rear sights and the bayonet lugs, with many small details besides. Also, by the time of the 9128, they're starting to go away from game twist rifling, although many still do have it. And then what about our final version here? The M9138TS. As with the cavalry carbine, when they went to the 38 short rifle, they started producing carbines with the fixed rear sight. And these would not have game twist rifling, standard bayonet lug. They could have a few different sling swivel arrangements. This one just has the bottom swivels again. Again, no storage compartment. And this one is a little unique in that it's chambered for 8mm Mauser, 7.9 as the rear sight is marked. That's a whole story in and of itself, but just know that there are guns chambered for that that came out of Italy, and you can distinguish them because they will have these reinforcing lugs in the, uh, in the stock. And many of the 8mm wound up in Egypt as training guns. And they have the standard bayonet lug, cleaning rod, everything you'd expect. Also, the uh, barrel is inlet a bit. Here's the slide side sling mount on the 28. Notice it has this non-moving bar, unlike earlier ones. And they would uh, build 9138TS carbines until about 1944, issuing them quite widely. And they're the last and probably most simplified version, and very easy to distinguish because of their fixed rear sight. And you can find these in all three calibers, but uh, 7.3 is the rarest. And with that, let's talk about our last model today. Alright, that section was a little long, but this one will be quite a bit shorter. The M38, technically short rifle, although to be fair with the barrel under 21 inches, there are plenty of carbines out there with longer barrels. And there's really only two versions. One in 7.35, 7.35 by 51, and 6.5, 6.5 by 52. This was designed as a complete new system. It's still the same Carcano bolt action, but they designed a new projectile, new cartridge with the Spitzer bullet for it. And the reason they selected 7.3, it was as large as they could fit in the existing magazine system, on block system, bolt system, they didn't want to have to redo it. Luckily 6.5 was already rimless so they didn't have to do that. The idea was more accuracy, more power, and in the 1920s and 30s the carbine had already become more important to Italy than the rifle, so they decided well let's just compromise at a short rifle. And finally, they introduced some production expediencies to save on time and money. For example, the fixed rear sight we've talked about, going away from the hex style barrel shrink to the round, and going away from the gain twist rifling to conventional rifling. So, since this is a short rifle, we have a trap door in the buttstock for a cleaning kit. We have a side Mounted sling only, no bottom. Early on, there'd be some changes to the barrel band. But, we well, really don't need to worry about that right now. And these would all have turned down bolts. 
So the production would begin in 1938, but only last for the 7.3 until 1940. You can check out my history video or anyone else's to explain why they went, went away from 7.3 and back to 6.5, but it was a logistical thing. So in 1940, they started producing the exact same short rifle, but in 6.5, and it had the designation M9138. There have been rumors that some M38s were reboard, rebarreled, excuse me, to 6.5 from 7.3. This obviously isn't true. All of the 7.3s were purpose built as such, and the 6.5s were purpose built as such as well. But the M9138 would only be produced for a couple of years, ending in 1941, when they would switch over to the 9141 long rifle. But that's a story for another day. What did they do with all their 7.3 M38s? Well, some were given to troops in the colonies in Africa. Others were given away to allies, such as Finland, which is why today we see many M38s with the SA in a box to denote Finnish army property. And they would actually send about 94,000 over to Finland, and then these would be imported into the USA by inner arms because they weren't really that used. They weren't well liked. The Finns didn't like their uh, fixed rear sight. Also, here's the original height rear uh, front sight. To try to get the range and accuracy they wanted, the fins actually gave them a taller front sight sometimes. So you'll see two different basic front sights on these, a Finnish one and an Italian. Other than that, though, you don't see a whole lot of variation. Of course, yeah, the fixed rear sight and everything was carried over to the carbine and the TS. It is worth noting that they did briefly make an M38 cavalry carbine and an M38 TS, both in 7.3, but these are very rare today. One final thing we could talk about is the bayonet on this, because it's pretty interesting. It's an interesting style of bayonet here, and it has two catches. There's one up front, very much like a late style cavalry carbine, spring loaded button even basically the same shape and location if you press in on it you can pull down and out for a blade locking it back in place so it is a cavalry style mechanism but rather than having a pointy a spike bayonet it's your traditional blade and the uh, stock and barrel band here are both inleted for it. Now on the other side, towards the rear, is a second spring-loaded button, and this can be used to remove the bayonet entirely from the gun. And this results in a unique bayonet lug really only seen on the M38 and 9138. So if you see this style of lug, that's what it is. As for the blade itself, here it is, has a ring, here's our catch, another catch we can again fold it like this. They did make sheaths for these if a soldier wanted to carry them because some production models they would um, fix the blade in the extended position because it is a little rattly. So some, they would pin the front. They would also make a version of this for the uh, M38 submachine gun. Essentially the same, but instead of a ring, it had a hook on the front. But again, that's a story for another day as well. But I don't know. I find the bayonet an interesting aspect of the M38. And it really goes to show you they were trying to make a one-size-fits-all firearm for infantry, cavalry, artillery, what have you. And again, Sam Carcano turned down bolt, as you'd expect. 
And these are kind of interesting because a lot of them were from Finland. And yes, this was the rifle that uh, was used to assassinate Kennedy. It was an M9138 in 6.5 millimeter with a 20.9 inch barrel. People often ask, and so that does give that variant a little bit of uh, notoriety or infamy. It was also fitted with a four power scope at the uh, firearms vendor and cost all of $19.95 plus postage. But that too is a story for another day. And with that, I hope this has helped someone if they're looking at a Carcano from IO or anyone else. They're interesting and fun and still quite affordable. And I encourage anyone who's interested to get into them. But it's always good to kind of have a basic understanding of the different variations and whatnot. And there are plenty of other sub-variants and limited production ones. I just wanted to show you the basic ones here today. So if you have any questions or comments, please do post them. And as always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check on the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha, and we'll catch you very soon next time.